fellow movie crusaders, welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades, as today we are going to be reviewing X-Men Dark Phoenix. Now, uh, for someone who's a very adamant X-Men fan like myself, I mean, Wolverine is my all-time favorite superhero. I mean, I've grown up watching the X-Men, whether it be the animated cartoon series or the, <coughs> the movie franchise that started in uh, 2000. Uh, all the way to today, where we finally finish the franchise before it gets reintroduced many years from now, probably, you know, five years from now to the MCU. Dark Phoenix is uh, basically the final one, the last hurrah of this franchise until it is revitalized in the MCU. Um, there's been a lot of problems with this, with this film, um, whether it be multiple reshoots, completely reshooting... Um, the entire ending because it felt a lot like a other uh, different kind of superhero film, Captain Marvel. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, to the actors not fully giving in their full, um, their full 100% in the film, uh, rewrites. There's just been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of bad things going on with this film uh, behind the scenes. Uh, also, the first um, review by critics, there was a fire alarm that went off. Uh, before the, in the last 20 minutes, and half the critics decided they didn't even care to watch the last 20 minutes that they had seen enough. So there's a lot of bad going into this movie. Um, so that's kind of why I waited a little bit to watch this, because frankly, I just didn't want to be utterly disappointed. Because um, I love the X-Men, and I want it to do well. I want to like this movie. So I finally went and watched it, uh, went in with the lowest of expectations uh, to see exactly just what went wrong with this beloved franchise of mine. So here we go with the review. The plot of X-Men Dark Phoenix is basically pretty darn close to the same uh, plot line of uh, X-Men 3 The Last Stand. Um, except that, you know, there's a little bit different, different things. The X-Men, this takes place in the 90s, uh, the X-Men uh, go up to space to save a bunch of astronauts and in the process of Gene uh, Jean Grey, played by Sophie, Sophie Turner, who everyone knows as Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones, uh, she gets hit with uh, what, what looks to be solar flares, and ends up being, uh, turns out, ends, ends up being okay after that, where everyone thought she was going to die, but she ends up becoming uh, way more powerful, and unable to control her emotions, and she becomes the Dark Phoenix, and now... X-Men and villain mutants and humans alike need to try to find a way to stop her before she gets out of control. And that's the general plot without going too much deeper into the story. But for anyone who has seen X-Men Last Stand, taking the Wolverine and the mutant cure out of the storyline, it's relatively the same kind of story. Um, what works with X-Men Dark Phoenix? Overall, uh... It's not as bad as I expected it to be. It really isn't. Um, it's definitely better than the very lackluster and boring X-Men Apocalypse. And it is leaps and bounds better than X-Men Origins Wolverine. Which anyone who knows me knows I despise that movie with every fiber of my being. Dark Phoenix. Um, and we'll get into all that's wrong with it here shortly. What works with the movie is when there is actually action scenes. Because there's not. There's like two maybe three action scenes in the film. It's a very action, um, action, the action in, for an X-Men movie, there's very little action, let's just say that. But when there is action, it actually is very enjoyable for the most part. Uh, Magneto does some really cool things that we haven't seen Magneto do before. He re they really make him integrate, um, every, let's put it this way, every mutant, for the most part, gets to actually really use their powers in, a, in, a, in the correct way, and in a way that we kind of haven't got to see much in the films previously. So, like, Magneto, uh, Nightcrawler, Storm, Cyclops, all of them do a really good job of actually being able to get to use their actual powers for once, uh, and the action scenes work really well for that. And so there's some real cool moments in the action scenes. Uh, Sophia Turner, uh, she actually... Or Sophie, I keep saying Sophia... Sophie Turner um, actually does a good job as Jean uh, for the most part. When when she's, <clears throat> I will say that when she's taken over by the by the power, 
her her acting is okay, not not the greatest. But when she's actually having to give emotion as Jean and um, having to feel for what's going on, what she has done, and all that kind of stuff, Sophie Turner actually does a great job. I actually really liked her in those scenes and in those roles. But most of those scenes are usually her having to be by herself and and feel those emotions. Um, but I think she does a great job. Obviously, James McAvoy and and Fassbender. Uh, they're always going to bring it, no matter what film they're in. And obviously, them returning as Xavier and Magneto, they definitely have uh, highlight scenes in the film, and they're definitely a joy to watch, even though Xavier's character this time around is kind of unlikable, in a sense, compared to previous films. But McAvoy does a great job with it, because McAvoy is always going to give his all, and Fassbender's always going to do his best, no matter how bad the film is. Um, but yeah, so those two definitely do great. Uh, Ty Sheridan, and what they actually give him to do as Cyclops, he actually does a pretty solid job. Same thing goes for, uh, Alexandra, uh, Ship as Storm. Um, she does a good job overall in her scenes. Um, it's just that, once again, they just don't get a whole lot to do. Jennifer Lawrence, you can tell she's kind of exhausted with this role. She doesn't really want to do it, but she knows it's the last film. So in the scenes that she is in, she actually looks like she's trying in this. And she does a decent job outside of one cringe-worthy line that they th make her... It felt force-fed in the film. Um, and that was only the real bad part I had about her. But, you know, Jennifer Lawrence does a solid job as as a uh, Mystique or Raven. Um, and then uh, Nicholas Holt. Uh, outside of one scene that I felt that he acted very poorly, um, Holt did a good job as well. Like, all these actors, they all come to do the role. I didn't really see... For instance, them not trying, like a lot of the reports have said. Uh, I mean, they're doing their job. It's just that the film, the script, and the direction is just not really there. Uh, the only performance that I just outright hated, and I'm going to go ahead and roll this into what doesn't work, because that's basically it for what works in this film, is the performances weren't bad, and, so, and the action sequences were nice when we got them. What does not work in this film is basically everything else. Uh, the story of Dark Phoenix is done in completely, completely wrong. You built up something with Jean Grey and Apocalypse at the end, and then you just completely abandoned it in this film. They basically make the Dark Phoenix story something of an anomaly that happens to Jean, and not something that was built inside her, which is what the actual story of Dark Phoenix is about. You built it up in, <coughs> in Apocalypse that she has this thing in her, and then you just basically pretended that that wasn't a thing in this movie. This film doesn't make it feel like Jean is this character. It basically feels like because of what happened in space, that's what's controlling Jean. That's what's making Jean do what she's doing. And not because Jean is this also this immensely powerful mutant that we just have only seen a minuscule of her power. So it really kind of dumbs down Jean Grey as a character in terms of her power overall. Um, the villains in this film are utterly atrocious. They slow down the film. They're basically playing monotone with no feelings, no reactions, led by Jessica Chastain. I know she's a fantastic actress, but she is god-awful in this film. And I don't think it's her fault. I think it's the writing and the directing and telling her to do what she's doing. She's basically basically playing a a soulless um, creature or alien, for the most part. And all of her lines are delivered so dry, with no emphasis, no nothing in the film that any time she's on screen, or any of the aliens or villains on screen, they just bring the movie to a halt, and, and it completely ruins it. And they're just generic alien villains. I mean, you have to go to the credits to actually see what their names are, because I don't think their names are uttered once in the entire film. And then, of course, there's the generic uh, mutants that they bring in to fight, because they don't want to kill the main X-Men or... Magneto or anything like that, so they have to ha bring in these other mutants to basically kill off that, all, once again, barely have names, uh, barely have any lines in the movie whatsoever. They're just fodder to kill off, so that way you can actually have some death in the film. Um, the the script's all over the place. There are storylines that are just thrown in that are not given any backstory to, because you gotta remember, this is ten years between Apocalypse and, and Dark Phoenix, and there is story plots going with Xavier, there are story plots going with Magneto, there's story plots going between Raven and, and Xavier, there's all these things that they keep throwing in there, but there's no backstory, there's no build, there's no nothing that that gives any of these, these stories any weight, 
and some of them are just abandoned as soon as they are brought in, uh, and with no, you know, going back to them or anything like that. There's certain characters, uh, Quicksilver, for example. He is in basically one actual scene because every X Men movie since uh, basically um, First Class, Days of Future Past, I can't remember which one. Uh, Days of Futures Pass. Uh, he gets one cool scene, and then they just knock him out of the film for some reason. Same thing goes with here. He's in one scene, he basically falls down. Sorry, spoiler alert, but let's face it, who cares? He falls down, and then he's injured for the entire film, and then we don't see him until the end. And it's just like, why? There, there's You have a great actor in Evan Peters, but you don't ever utilize him. And that's the problem with a lot of the characters in this film. They're not utilized to their full potential, and because of that, the, the script falls and, and fails. It's the movie's not awful, you know. You're not watching it going, "This is this is a train wreck." It's, just, it's okay. It's meh, you know. It's like you're watching it, you know, and you see these characters. You see the love story between Jean Grey and and and, and uh, Scott Summers, aka Cyclops. <coughs> and the only reason you care about the relationship in the first place is because we know the relationship from when. Uh, of Meek Jansen and James Marsden played Jean Grey and Cyclops, and we know that love story is there. It's not because Ty Sheridan and Sophie Turner make us feel that way, because, let's face it, outside of Apocalypse, we haven't really had much time to know this new cast, or love this new cast, or feel anything for this new cast. So anything that happens in the film outside of Beast, Xavier, Magneto, or Mystique just feels kind of hollow and empty. Like, nothing... Like, when something happens to any of the other, the younger cast, who cares at this point? You haven't given us any time to, to fall for these characters. You haven't given us any time to care about these characters. We care about them in the sense of the franchise, because we know those characters from the older films when they were played by older actors. But this new cast, we haven't given, given proper time to really give a damn about these characters. And that's the problem with this film, and why this film shouldn't have been made, or at least Dark Phoenix story hasn't been made, is that you have not given us the proper time to care about these characters. I also feel that because of that, I don't think this movie was made with the intent of being the last film in the X-Men franchise. Obviously, the Disney, um, the Disney takeover of buying Fox pro is, is what led to this being the last film. Um, because the end of the film feels very rushed, it feels very bookendish. Uh, but doesn't isn't isn't a proper ending to me for the uh, for the end of this franchise. It just kind of gets tied with, with the events of the film that happen. It gets tied up into a little bow at the end with no repercussions, no like with with everything that was built up and what was going on with the story of the film. The way it ends is very incomplete. Nothing is explained. Nothing is. No repercussions are taken uh, of of what happened in the film. It's just kind of like. Oh, and here's the end, and da 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 da. Oh, and just in case, here's a little cliffhanger part at the end, just to leave the story open, even though we know they're not gonna go back to it because Disney's gonna take over this franchise. So why even leave that? Um, it's it's a very incomplete film overall. So overall thoughts, it's not awful. I mean, it's still an X Men movie. I I still liked a good some parts of it. It's just. A lot of this is is because of, A, the direction and the writing, and because Disney took over, they had to kind of basically change their, their plan and their format, and because of that, the movie is literally at a disadvantage from the get-go. Um, hollow characters, hollow story, and if none of that is at the fault of the actors or actresses. They all do a solid job outside of... And like I said, I, even, I hated Jessica Chastain's performance. I don't blame her for the performance. I blame the writing and the direction. But, yeah, it's a very lackluster, soulless end to a to a prominent franchise that a lot of people like to talk trash about, but literally they only had three bad films out of, what, nine? So it's a real good franchise. I love this franchise. I love the X-Men. Um, this is not the way I wanted to see them go out. And so because of that, in terms of recommendation, if you want to see how the X-Men franchise ends, then yeah, go out and see this movie. But I would probably say wait for it to come out to streaming or DVD or Blu-ray, don't waste your money to go see it, which sucks, because I would, I would love for this movie to do well, but it's just not worth it. It's not it's not worth saving at this point. We know it's the end. Making a ton of money on it isn't going to do anything for it. MCU is going to recreate the X-Men here probably in five years or so, and then we can fall in love with them again the proper way. 
so yeah, I can't really recommend this for anyone who's you know wanting to go see a movie. There's so many other great films out in theaters right now to go see instead of this. So I can't really recommend this unless you're a very, very big X-Men fan. But even then, you're going to be disappointed. Um, but yeah, it's like it's okay. It's meh. Um, it's not the worst thing. I didn't hate it, but I also didn't like it either. And so that's kind of my overall thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, all, obviously, because of this, um, it, it doesn't obviously crack my top 10 at all. So the top 10 um, basically stay the same. Uh, going into the top 10 right now real quick, if you guys didn't see the last review, it's basically, like I said, the same top 10. Uh, Avengers Endgame still stays at the number one slot, followed by Rocket Man. Uh, number three goes to Booksmart, followed by Us. Uh, John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum at number five. Number six being Long Shot, seven being Brightburn, eight being Disney's Aladdin, nine being, nine being Shazam, and ten going to Godzilla, King of the Monsters, with Pokemon, Detective Pikachu being right outside the top ten. Uh, next review is going to be Men in Black International, so feel free to check that out as soon as it pops up here on YouTube. And then next week we've got Toy Story 4. Uh, I mean... I, I love Toy Story. I think it's a fantastic franchise, so be on the lookout for that. That review will be coming up probably on next Friday. Um, I hope you guys liked this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button onto the channel, so that way you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on YouTube. And also don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. And until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie crusaders.